in Europe that celebrate, not celebrate, but honor those victims of communism around the world. Um, but you know, this is the first one in the U.S. that we're aware of. So my name is Ken Pope, and I'm the CEO of the foundation. And the museum has been open. Some of you, I think, may have uh, joined us for our inaugural opening. That was on the 8th of June, and we opened to the public on the 13th of June. So we've been open just a few months. And our museum is focused on um, two things. It's, it's the victims, remembering the victims, but also remembering those people who are still suffering under communism today. And sadly, your, your homeland is still <laughs> suffering under that system. So if you, behind you, the wall behind you, you see we have the victims. We talk about the 100 million victims that were killed, murdered by communist regimes around the world. And we talk about the 1.5 billion people who still live under that system today. Mainly China is the largest number, obviously, but then Vietnam also has a number of people as well that are still suffering under the system. The museum, uh, we, it's, this is phase one of a three-phase project. So phase one is the current museum you, you're in now. We call it more of a boutique museum. It's three galleries downstairs and a temporary exhibit upstairs. Um, next is going to be a digital museum. That's phase two. And then phase three, have any of you had the opportunity to visit the Holocaust Museum? Yes. Okay, that's our ultimate goal is to have something that large that covers all the expanse of, of all the victims of communism, all the nations who've suffered under this, under this system. Right now, due to the size of this one, we can't tell the story completely in three small galleries in a temporary space. So we want to eventually get to that point where hopefully every country will have its own little wing or section where we can tell the story more fully. Because they're all, they're all important. Every victim, every person that died in the system is very important. And we need to remember it. So what we'll do is we're going to briefly go through the museum. Um, I'll kind of show you where everything is, talk about the themes for each one of the galleries. And then we'll go upstairs take a look at the uh, temporary space. And then we'll go into our event hall and we'll have our event. And then after we finish that, we have a lot of things going on today, as you can imagine. Um, so we'll, we'll finish up and then we'll let you guys come back downstairs and spend as much time downstairs in the museum galleries as you'd like. All right, with that said, let's we'll talk about Gallery 1. Gallery 1 starts at the very beginning. It talks about the theorists, the guys who came up with this horrible idea called communism. I think we all know who they are. Marx, Engels, and then the transition to from theory to this ideology and then the system of rule um, started by Lenin and, and the Soviet Union. Russia. Are, can I say something? Sure, please. Sir. What's your name? Ken. Oh, Ken. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a few words I want to say. Sure. Our Vietnamese American is the, the one of the primary contribute to the study. Now, I heard you say that uh, we have three more stages to finish. And we have about 100, we have about 100 million victim was killed by the communists, especially one million of the Vietnamese people. So in the near future, we would like to contribute the money, the effort, and, and the documentation to build up the museum. But we wish to talk to one of you about it. In the past, we are very close with, with the Lee Edwards. But we hope in the future, it will be contact direct with you, and you can reserve for our Vietnamese we are now victim of small space, and that very good place for us to start. That means two-way traffic. We contribute, and we get some return. Sure. Okay? Thank you very much. That's, That's what we like to do. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so let's go. The first, the, the theme of the first gallery is revolution. So let's let's take a step in here. Okay, so in, in, in Gallery 1, we're talking about revolution, where it all started with the theorists. And then we talk about all these various themes that are common to all communist regimes around the world. It's a surveillance state. The state lies all the time about everything. There's religious oppression against all religious groups. Anybody who has faith because the communists really don't feel comfortable with its people believing anything except the guys leading and ruling from the top. And then state control of every single aspect of life. And those are the pictures that we have kind of showing different aspects of that. 
And then you have the narrative on the side that talks about where it started and then its progression throughout. And we're going through mainly just the revolution where it started in Europe. And to talk about Lenin in the video, it's about a seven minute video on the big screen. And on the sides, we have artifact cases, small cases. We have some artifacts from this period of time that we're discussing in this, in this museum. For that particular section. So let's uh, let's move on to gallery two. And then again, after the after we do our event upstairs, you can come back down and spend as much time as you'd like. Have another idea. The exiled party founder saw an opportunity to seize power and launch a communist revolution. By promising to remove Russia from the Great War, then secured passage from Germany back to St. Petersburg. The people need peace. So we talk about all that up through the end of the World War II period. So we talk about the different people groups who have suffered under this. We start off with Stalin as he transitions to that period, goes around the room. We talk about gulags, famine, it's common to all different groups. And then on the movie on the screen, we have not just the Soviet gulag, but every group of communist regimes that imprisoned its people in similar hard labor camps or re-education camps. So we have the Soviet era, we have Vietnam, we have Cambodia, we have all of them, China, North Korea. Everyone who does this, we try to catalog, and what we do is we tell a personal story. These are real people who share their, their stories with us. We just have some some small displays of different things. We have like the starvation rations that you get in a gulag typically. We talk about the different massacres that took place during these different periods. So again, very, very hard history, very painful for the people who went through it. And it's hard to talk about with some groups too. All right, so let's move on to gallery three. Excuse me, sir. Come on. So Gallery 3, Gallery 3 we're talking about something a little bit different. So we talked about revolution, repression, now we're talking about resistance. So not everybody in a lot of countries, not everybody in these countries simply accepted what was going on. They didn't accept the communist ideology, they didn't accept the communist rule, and they stood up against it. So we had resistance movements in every country that suffered under communism. Vietnamese had a long history of fighting communism with our, our fellow soldiers. I'm a retired army officer. I didn't serve in Vietnam, I served in Iraq, but I understand what it's like to be in combat and what it's like to fight for your country and for your homeland. So we talked about groups who were a little bit different than the soldiers. So the great thing about being a soldier is you can fight back. And the people I really admire as heroes are the guys who stood up against it that didn't have a weapon, they didn't get a chance to fight back. They just stood in the face of tyranny stood against it. So we talk about different places around the world. And then what we want to show as well is we have this video that talks about the history of communism and about the death toll, about the people who have been kept captive all this time. So you see the numbers below? It talks about the numbers of people that this system called communism killed or murdered, and the number of victims that are still suffering under the communist system today. Then in the center we have an interactive piece where you can choose one of three people who are based on real people who suffered under a communist regime and had to make some very difficult choices of what to do. And we portray that in a series of questions and you get to play that person, make these different choices about what, what, what would you do this, in this situation and how would you respond. And then you would see what the results were for that person. And again, it goes like you see China, you get into Asia, Cambodia, Vietnam, and then as we start transitioning out, we talk about the Baltics, and then we have this Remember Us section, and what we have here are people, again, real people, who 
we suffer in these communist regimes. And what the next part of what we're doing now is we're getting to put numbers on here. And then we'll have a system over here for a QR code. You can take the QR code, put your number in, and it'll tell the story about each one of the individuals on the wall. And we also have 28 different languages to talk about just that, that term there, remember us, because that's what we're all about, is remembering the victims of communism. All the different people, groups, and cultures that suffer under the system. Again, you guys know this very well. Because your families, and, or you personally suffer under the system. Okay. So let's start walking up the stairs and walk up the more things. Take a look in here as well. And again, this will be expanded in our later this year. We're going to let you off later today. talk about a couple of different spaces up there. So please come on out. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to go uh, up to the third floor and we're going to talk about, show you the paper exhibit. And what we're hoping is that if you mentioned about sharing the problems, is we have a temporary exhibit space. It's one, we have the tenement square up there right now. And that we're going to pull out in December. And then we have a Cuba group coming in next. And what we'd like to do is, is whenever you guys are ready, we'd like to have a Vietnamese group put their temporary exhibit space up. I think that'd be great. So what you're going to see is the statue. So that's our, the symbol you just saw the one lying the down there. And that is a replica of what the students in the Square put up right before the unfortunate Chinese came in and, and slaughtered them and took them out. Um, also, as you go up the stairs, you're going to notice on the walls that the paintings. All the paintings are from um, Nikolai Getman. And Getman, um, artist who actually survived seven years in a Soviet gulag. And he, while he was sitting there, there was a small group of people he was with. Somebody drew a little snide remark about Stalin on a cigarette paper. And they found that they sent us into the gulag. He, when, he, when he finally was released, he started doing these paintings from recollection. And he was hiding that from his mind, which was people would come in and try to see what he was doing. And he would always have a landscape painting out. And then he would, when they left, he would fill in with the stories of what really was taking place there. So let's walk upstairs, then we'll go in to see the temporary exhibit space. Okay, let's uh, let's talk about the temporary exhibit space. So 
Again, this is the Tenement Square has been up since uh, we opened, so it's been up since June. It's going to come down in, um, next month, December, um, like the 20th, we're going to bring it down. So right now, after, uh, after the communists went in and took over Hong Kong, they closed their Hong Kong Museum. So right now, we have the, currently the largest um, Hong Kong exhibit of what took place in uh, Tiananmen Square, rather, the, long, the largest Tiananmen Square exhibit anywhere that we're aware of. Okay, again, because the communists came in and took everything down. We actually have uh, Chinese um, citizens come in to see this part, and they, they don't know anything about it. They've never heard of this before. Because again, the information is controlled by, what, by the government, so they don't get to see it. Now, what, what I will tell you is this, uh, this space, um, all this belongs to the creator, so they take it with them when they leave. And so what you have basically is everything that's, uh, that's on the wall, all this space, all the center part, None of the cases stay, that's all theirs. So this is basically an empty space. So whatever you would like to create to fill the space, mm -hmm. you know, we can our, our dream. Yep. That's our dream too, we'd love to have it. So is this thing. So we can give you the measurements, the dimensions, so you can figure out exactly what would fit and you could arrange it how you want, we'll work with you. But what about the spaces do you have kind of more space for us? Or you have to squeeze in some other place? Oh, it's gonna be right here. Everything will be right here. Yeah. Just it'll be here. it'll be temporary. Yeah. Then once we build the next phase, then we'll have you know permanent spaces for everybody. Okay. Good. So let's uh let's go into our event space so we can sit down and we can talk and be comfortable. Get on with our to do our what program. Size of this? Yeah. We're gonna we'll send you the dimensions. Yeah. Okay. So please come this way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good. A card like you asked. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Yes, we'll, yeah. we'll continue the discussion. Yeah, because I have been contacting you, you know, regarding a whole bunch of things. Yes. Yeah. Without either say that there's a big sense of uh, quite some food, some document about the operation of the guidelines, and uh, you So please come on in. Everybody have a seat and get comfortable. Sit up from here. I would like to invite you to get off one of the chairs. And this is the remote gym. This is the remote gym. Please sit up from here. And uh, you, yes, please. I'm looking for you. I thought you were standing there. So first of all, thank you to um, um, your organization. Um, I'd just like to have one to bring this uh, special event today, but understand that we have some uh, traffic issue over there, so people get lost of that schedule is heavy high a little bit, but we try as best as we catch it up and I'll begin. I think today is we all here because uh, on November 7th, they can get for uh, more than 100 million victims of communism around the world, and among them more than 1 million people become these. And still, we are still under the communist religion, so that number will be back up for years, because I know that number released back to 1997, when the form of the uh, Soviet and the Black Group released. But now, more than two decades from that day, so the victim and the communist thing around the world, you know, more than that. So that is why we're here at the memorial this morning. And now, the most important thing is this. We have to educate not just um, generation like me, but much younger to understand the dangers of socialism or communism around the world to prevent that going to happen again. History is something like, to me, it's like a, 
the teacher, the future is like an invasion. Without the history of the past, we cannot have a present or the future. So with further ado, I would like to uh, once again, uh, from the bottom of my heart, and also out on behalf of the young generation of the Republic of Vietnam, we thank all of you be with us today. Thanks again. Thank you very much. And um, first of all, I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Uh, Ken Pop. You all already know him, so he will come up and say a few words about the mission and then he will get shared with us. And then we follow up with the, uh, um, the national anthem, the one moment, the moment of silence. Right now, in this room, I would like the moment of silence is just for the Vietnamese. Over there, we thank again for the people around the world. But right here, at this moment, when we do it, we look for the Vietnamese. And then we will have a short video clip from young, young generation, like my niece, my nephew, my They do a very good documentary of one of the tragedies caused by the Vietnamese communism. And then we call up with a Q&A. I hope that you can help generation. You can see that my age. They come from all of different places today because they want to contribute to have the exhibition for the Vietnam people. It's all for the this come up. First of all, I've already introduced myself, so I want you to that better. Okay, so my uh, trusty event organizer always helps me uh, make sure I'm using the microphone the right way. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to thank you again for coming. This is uh, really a special event. Um, I have a lot of friends who are uh, from the U.S. military who were Vietnam veterans that kind of taught me the right way when I was growing up. So. I got to know some of the Vietnamese community through them and a few other friends. So really, it's an honor for you to be here today. And I just want to welcome you on both my behalf and Ambassador Greenberg and our co-host today, the Republic of Vietnam Next Generation. So we hope you all enjoy the brief tour of the museum downstairs. Again, it's the Queen Street Museum, Jewel, Jewel Box Museum downstairs. Um, again, we have the Tenement Square Massacre um, Exhibit 2. Um, we hope that becomes in the not too distant future, a Vietnamese temporary exhibit that we would like to share their story there. Some of you know that DOC was established to tell the history and to teach the truth about communism. Uh, through the unanimous act of Congress that was signed into law by President Clinton in 1993. Today is uh, the 7th of November and marks the National Day of Remembrance as we honor those billions of victims of a failed ideology and communist rulers determined to impose their vision of cruelty and violence on their people. You saw that in a lot of cases firsthand. Nearly 40 nations like yours have suffered under communist rule. As the Museum downstairs has illustrated, communist regimes have killed more than 100 million people. We think that number is low, and we're going to do some research to find out what the real number is. They've enslaved millions more, and still today, 1.5 billion people still live under this system. That's why VOC exists, to tell those stories, to tell your story. Sadly, the Vietnamese community knows all too well the true nature of communism. Um, some in this room have personally suffered directly at the hands of the Vietnamese communist regime. And all of you know someone or have family members who have suffered and died in the long Vietnamese struggle with this destructive ideology system rule. Okay, if you think about the massacre, it's the city of Wei. Thousands killed fleeing from, to Laos from the Central Highlands, the boat people, uh, the brutal treatment of our American soldiers who were POWs there during the war, during our shared fight against communism, demonstrates the truth, not just about the Vietnamese experience with communism, but also all communist regimes around the world that impose this ideology on their people. So the VR, VOC, our friends um, with the Republic of Vietnam, next generations want to place communism where it really belongs, on ash heap history, so where no country has to experience this anymore. And we do that through education, through research, coalition building, working together with your groups and other groups, to remind those uh, that we are a foundation committed to those who fight against communism 
and those who are still seeking freedom in their countries today. And also the human rights and human dignity that they should have, but they don't in so many cases. So again, I welcome you here at DMC, um, the Vietnamese community has been a great partner, a great supporter of our foundation. You mentioned already the support that you gave us to our, our monument that you used with you this morning. You've also supported finance with this museum, and we really appreciate that. We thank you for bringing your group here. It's great to share this day, this day of remembrance with a group of people who truly understand what it means. So we welcome you and your families and your friends to come visit us anytime. You're always welcome. I know that the uh, RVGN has put together a good program for today, a great program. I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of it, sharing it with you, and answering any questions you have about our museum. So again, thank you and welcome. <laughs> And um, before we move it up uh, to the next part, I would like to shortly introduce once again, um, sitting up in front of us, <clears throat> this uh, gentleman, the Vietnamese American, I would say the anti communism Vietnamese American. That's more clear that way. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Dinh Hong Kuen, Mr. Doan Hu Den, and Mr. Nguyen Mo Chin. All of them have been contributed a lot, a lot, not just to our community, but also to the Victim of Communism Foundation. And they are represented for the first generation. And we, as the next generation, we will, I don't know if we can do like that, but we hope with your help we can do it, make things happen here. So um, the next one I would like to do is like, um, a special moment for the, all the Vietnamese victim communism. So this is the moment of silence and the uh, flag ceremony. So I would like to invite all you to stand up and we play the national anthem in the moment of silence. National Anthem of Vietnam.